Keanu Reeves refused to sell his soul to Hollywood. Most celebrities' lowest moments, biggest freakouts, or controversies draw the most interest from the general public. For Keanu Reeves, it's the total opposite. The more normal, down to earth, and humble he is, the bigger the response. And Everyone's like, oh yeah, he saved all these people from 9-11. And you see like what their, what their other celebrities are doing. Did you see this? Angelina Jolie was caught on an undercover camera talking about the rituals they do. Angelina Jolie, 23 time, describes the ritual she performed earlier that year to join the order of the Illuminati. Hello, Akbar! The identity like has been I would, redacted. I would film these if they're ever encouraged, like everybody, all different types of sexual. But there is that thing where it's like a lot of people just understand me with and they think it's super fun. And I have to like explain to people. SM is like bondage chat, right? Like that Rihanna video where they tie you up in chains and slap you like 50 shades of Illuminati. Well, wow. how? Like, where it's more like you're tied down because you need to, like, be able to, like, have somebody hold you down and keep you still, or, like, you would fight to mess with them down. Like. Angelina is heard describing the gruesome ritual celebrities perform to join the Illuminati and claims is not the same as SM, conceptual sexual torture. Although it's all compared to when there's there on the pentagram with the goat, it's the Baphomet, it's disgusting. Every time. But people see this stuff and still think it's fine. Did you see that new Doja Cat video? Where they they actually like their their music videos, it used to be like subtle and openly they just worship Satan and every single piece of media they put out. And I saw this video from an occultist today, and the occultist was telling the interviewer that the hardest people to brainwash, the hardest people to manipulate with spells, because all this stuff is real, like magic, all this stuff is real. The hardest people to manipulate from the occultist mouth is a Muslim because they have a connection, because they're praying the most. They, they don't really tie any of it to faith. They're just saying the hardest people to corrupt are Muslims because they have the strongest connection with God because they're praying so much, and prayer is like a shield from all these spells. And there's a lot, there's people that there's actual people think, Chad, do you think that, do you think that you've ever had somebody cast a spell on you? Do, these witches, bro, the witches are real. I think I've actually, Of course, they recruit. She's encouraging other celebrities to join the Illuminati, which is other members hold to do. It's like a pyramid scheme of torture. Be able to heal once you're being like or something. It's like it comes from a real, real place. It's like it comes from a real place. Hell, like all these. Chat said your mom casted a spell on my thing, bro. What the fuck? A shaman ritual. Someone did it on my grandma. She died at 20. May God rest her soul. Why would someone cast a spell on your grandma? as opposed to being accessories or something like that. Angelina explains the satanic objects used in the ceremony aren't just superficial. They truly summon dark spirits that create a real bond between yourself and Satan. Many members also get tattoos during the ritual to sacrifice more blood. See how it's like something, it was a big reveal? Doja Cat just has the ta these tattoos all over her body now, and she posted on Instagram. They make Satan their bio. Like, it, old like celebrities, you would expose it. It'd be this undercover video like this. Now they're just telling you, yes, look, come to my concert and go to hell. Like, there's like that time where he's like, oh, I have tattoos. And after a while, you're like, you can explain them and they can mean something. It's just, it comes from that real place. Some of the rituals are indeed filmed and given to high ranking members to watch. Yeah, which compromise all of them. The tapes will now reveal Angelina showed her friends one of the videos, which is against the rules. Bro, she freaky as hell, man. Yeah, I don't know. I only saw that film she wrote over that night. Because people were like dark or like that kind of, you know, but it's a crazy movie. Like, I don't know. 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 I don
labeled like see everybody's sex, like just sexuality. Or, but it's so weird when you just. Yeah, I had like the most amazing compromising pictures of people. Bruh, she has compromising pictures of people, but that's. The Illuminati is one big black magic cult. In this 2011 video that has 16 million views, a woman backed her Mercedes SUV. Black magic just destroyed this video. Most celebrity respect shows in the way they stand back and give him space. And meanwhile, he's smiling, talking, reaching out to them. He's doing nothing to push them away. In this 2015 video, Keanu walks through an airport in a hurry while stopping to take some photos with fans. He is flying commercial and has no bodyguards despite him being worth $350 million. 7.7 million views. Here's what Joe Rogan had to say about Keanu. That guy goes to, sits, sits on the subway by himself. By himself. No, like, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, Why does Joe Rogan sound like Chris and Mr. Beast? Keanu. That guy goes to, sits, sits on the subway by himself. By himself. Oh, no, no, like, that's freaking, freaking awesome. Yeah, but there's, there's no, no obvious <laughs> outward displays of wealth from him. Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. insanely wealthy. Yeah. But when you see him, he's dressed like me. Yeah. He's, he's got, got like a regular watch on, on sneakers. He's normal as f man. Yeah. It's, it's real weird. Some of you might think it's weird that people praise Keanu for having basic human decency, which goes to show you how Hollywood has lowered our expectations for celebrities immensely. But once you learn about Keanu's rough upbringing, as well as his over-the-top acts of generosity, you will understand why he has earned the title of the nicest man in Hollywood. Make sure you're drinking water. Mm. Keanu's father, Samuel Reeves, struggled with substance abuse. Don't tell me what to do, Patrick CZ. I don't want to drink water. Anymore. Was in and out of prison for selling heroin until he ultimately abandoned his family when Keanu was just three years old, forcing his mother, Patricia, left to raise two children on her own, working tirelessly as a costume designer. Patricia married and divorced four different men during Keanu's upbringing. Bruh. According to Keanu's Bruh. sister, the revolving door of men had a substantial impact on their childhood. How we lived our lives depended on the man. Imagine describing your mom's relationships as a revolving door of penises. And of the moment. Despite having numerous father figures growing up, the kids were on their own for the most part. Kim claims, we never had anyone to play with us, to watch me riding horses or Keanu playing hockey. We all know that young men who grow up without stable father figures are more likely to grow up aggressive, hangry, Isn't it, doesn't it show a lot about Hollywood that this is like a big talkie point? Like, Keanu's such a nice guy. The bar's so like, whoa, he took pictures at the airport? Cause there's so, so, so many of them are pretentious satanic assholes that when one dude is like, yeah, I'm just like gonna wear a hoodie. Everyone's like, whoa, he was in a movie? And he wears t-shirts just like me. Depressed and often repeat the cycle of abandonment. Keanu was set up for failure from the very beginning. His teachers noticed a vague sadness that loomed above him like a dark cloud. He spent more than five years bouncing from one high school to another, including one where he got expelled because he was too rambunctious. Keanu thinks he talked too much and was not generally the most well-oiled machine in the school. I was just getting in their way, I guess. Keanu felt a strong disconnect from others. They made him feel unwelcome, which did not change when he arrived in Hollywood. Reeves' agents told him that his name was Too Ethnic. Now this was the mid-1980s, but it still seems like a silly thing to worry about. And although Keanu was justifiably annoyed about it, he actually took what they said into consideration and tried a different name. Uh, that, is that really right? It just makes sense. If you're looking for mass appeal and the people don't even know how to pronounce your name, it's just, it is what it is calling himself Casey or Casey Reeves. But whenever he had auditions and they called Casey, he wouldn't respond. Most people would not even consider changing their name, let alone actually giving it a shot. Why does he look like if Leafy was an actor? Like if, if Leafy was in Hollywood? Keanu proved early on he was open-minded and easy to work with. He went back to using his real name and it had zero negative impact on his career. What did have an impact on his career were some of the roles he landed early on. The foundation for Hollywood's nice guy was built on him being casted as somewhat of a teen heartthrob. Young and handsome male actors often accrue fan bases of women who romanticize them as the perfect guy. First, he starred in NBC's Babes in Toyland, Act of Vengeance, and Brotherhood of Justice, as well as making his first motion picture appearances in the sports drama Youngblood and the low-budget romantic drama Flying. But when he met casting director Carrie Fraser, everything changed. He walked in the door and I went, oh my God, this is my guy. It was just because of the way he held his body. His shoes were untied and what he was wearing looked like a young person growing into being a man. I was over the moon about him. His and then they fucked. 
and compromised each other on camera. Youth appeal earned him roles in dramas such as The Night Before, The Prince of Pennsylvania, and Permanent Record. But his big break came in 1989 with Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Although the film received mixed reviews, it was a solid box office success, grossing 40 million against a- 40 million for like a, a weed, <laughs> dude, weed, chow. This guy keeps making me think of Leafy, like if I, if, where, where's Leafy been? Where, is he still streaming? Where's Leafy at? $10 million budget. Reeves' portrayal as Ted Logan significantly boosted Keanu's Hollywood profile. Before getting the part, director Stephen Herrick screened between 200 and 300 actors for the main roles, requesting that each actor try out for both leading roles. Keanu Dude. was among the first to audition, Me. and Herrick immediately set on casting him as Ted. When Keanu came in, he was one of the first. It was really kind of like, wow. He's Ted, and there was sort of a lovable goofiness to him. But Keanu wasn't just acting as a lovable good guy. That was really him. He proved that in 1991, where his act of kindness changed a man's career. In the adventure film My Own Private Idaho, Keanu co-starred along River Phoenix as a street hustler. Before filming, director Gus Van Sant struggled conceptualizing actors for the two lead roles. He sent the script out to Keanu and River's agents, expecting them to reject it. Reeves' agent was open to the project, however, Phoenix's agent stopped reading the screenplay halfway down the first page, adamantly declining. Van Sant convinced Keanu to personally deliver the script to River Phoenix at his home in Florida since they were friends. Keanu did the director a massive favor, and over the 1990 Christmas holiday, he rode his motorcycle from his family home in Canada to the Phoenix Family Ranch in McCanopy, Florida, roughly a 2100 kilometer or 1300 mile ride. After the long ride, River read the script and wanted the role that Keanu was casted as, but they convinced him to take the edgier role of the drug addicted hustler, Mike, which he accepted. The craziest part is, River ended up getting way more praise than Keanu in this film. Phoenix won best act. Didn't that guy get murked? Something happened. I mean, rest in peace. I don't want to say it, but he honors at the why the Joker's uh, Joaquin Phoenix's brother Joaquin Phoenix's brother how did he die Jack? Venice Film Festival the National Society of Film Critics and the Independent Spirit Awards tragically in 1993 following several days of binging on cocaine and heroin ah the good old Zerka method 23 year old River Phoenix passed away outside Hollywood's Viper Room nightclub right in front of his brother okay so he didn't get murked he was just tweaking he was Christ is King! Sister sorry, sorry. and girl. Hey! Don't do drugs. Girlfriend. Keanu has rarely mentioned his close friendship with River over the years, opting to keep that part of his life private. But River's death still feels like a fresh wound to Keanu's heart even 30 years later. But if we're being honest, Keanu driving that motorcycle wasn't much of a sacrifice. That man loves to ride. Yo, why is his room like that, man? However, during the filming of The Devil's Advocate, he gave up something that 99% of other actors wouldn't, money. The Devil's Advocate is a This dude is creeping me out. Wait, wait, wait. look at Patrick. Something that 99% of other actors ready, wouldn't, ready? money. What the fuck, bro? Bro. Bumbucka! You guys keep telling me to watch Jin caught on tape videos. This is one right here. The Devil's Advocate is a supernatural thriller that follows a young lawyer who dives deep into the dark world of success and temptation. While casting, producers approached Oscar winner Al Pacino, who turned down the role of John Milton three separate times due to the cliché nature of the character. Pacino even suggested Robert Redford and Sean Connery for the role. Keanu reportedly took a substantial pay cut worth millions of dollars so that producers could meet Al Pacino's salary demands. And yet again, Keanu's sacrifice benefited everyone but him. The film grossed over $61 million at the box office, and Al Pacino's performance was highly praised as one of the few bright spots in the film. And it wasn't the last time he gave up some of his salary. The actor reportedly took a 90% pay cut three years later so that he could star alongside Gene Hackman in The Replacements. What a good guy. But it didn't really matter if Keanu was a great guy or not, because many people thought he was a mediocre actor. In his most successful film at this point, he was considered the worst performer. Bram Stoker's Dracula was the award-winning gothic horror film where Reeves portrayed Jonathan Harker. The film was critically and commercially successful, grossing $82 million worldwide, surpassing Point
point break as Keanu's highest grossing film. Although the film was a success, many critics disagreed with Keanu's casting and considered his performance weak. Total film writer Josh Winning said that Keanu's work spoiled the movie. He mentioned it in a 2011 list of 50 performances that ruined movies. Keanu's attempt at an English accent has been considered one of the worst accents in the history of recorded film. Yes, of course, sir. If I may inquire, what in fact happened to Mr. Renfield in Transylvania? Bruh, I could do better. Bruh. But it doesn't stop there. What exactly happened in Transylvania? In 1993, Keanu had a role in the Shakespearean-based romantic comedy, Much Ado About Nothing. Despite receiving positive reviews, Reeves' casting once again garnered criticism, and he would be nominated for Worst Supporting Actor at the Golden Raspberry Awards. After two more lackluster drama films, Keanu's career was on life support. Luckily for him, something big was right around the corner. Speed, an action classic whose premise revolves around a bus that is rigged by a terrorist to explode if its speed falls below 50 miles per hour. In 1993, executives were looking for an actor to portray the protagonist, Officer Jack Traven. They considered Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, Wesley Snipes, and Woody Harrelson, but landed on Keanu. And again, he had to make some major sacrifices for this role. The director, Jean de Bont, didn't want the character to have long hair, so Keanu shaved his head. But then the studio executives got so upset over his shaved head that they demanded he wear a wig. But this was the director's vision, so they trusted him. However, there were more problems. DeBont didn't think Reeves looked strong enough. The thing with Keanu is that he looks very boyish. I didn't want him to be like a kid, and he loves to be like a kid. Keanu was yet again dedicated to completing a director's vision. He spent two months filling out his frame and getting in shape for the role. He was nervous in the beginning, then he got addicted to the adrenaline. This was only Keanu's second action film, but the hard work paid off big time. The summer of 1994 saw the release of Speed, which grossed $350 million on a $30 million budget. Wow, what a nice guy. Oh, money. Okay. But comedy night chat? Yes or no? Be them for their hard work, Keanu generously gave each member of the film stunt team. Whoa! He gave away a multi-millionaire, gave away a couple on ten bands. <laughs> a brand new Harley Davidson Whoa, motorbike. A and motorbike. No, this wasn't the only time he ever gave gifts to cast members. Reeves gave his. Basically, the bar is really low for Hollywood celebrities. You give away ten bands, you take home a hundred mil. Oh, but he gave away more. All right. All right. John Wick Chapter Four stunt team personalized Rolex Submariner watches to thank them for their hard work. The watches were Chat, worth. all of you hate comedy night. Why do you guys hate comedy night? Ten thousand dollars each. He also took care of the Matrix Resurrection stunt team, booking them an all expenses paid trip to the premiere. As a token of his appreciation, Reeves took care of the private jet travel and hotel accommodations, premiere tickets, and even organized a special post premiere brunch for invitees, among other gifts. It was reported by multiple news outlets that Keanu donated thirty one and a half million, or seventy percent of his Matrix money, to cancer research. However, the story is not true. You spent all that money on cancer research and they still didn't find out what causes cancer. Like, bruh. Keanu Reeves did not donate 70% of his salary than 42 million views. Just the idea of him riding the subway instead of some limousine or having a personalized drive. NPCs are like, whoa, he rides public transportation. Ever made people relate to the icon, let alone giving up his seat. Many photos of him with women went viral that point out his no touching policy. He was being coined a- Whoa, he doesn't even touch women. He's like an incel dude like me. Respectful king because he refuses to rest his hand on women while taking photos with them and he rather just floats it a few inches away from their back. Most is, is touching is touching women haram like should I do that too? Celebrities' dark side or controversies drive the most engagement. For Keanu, it's the total opposite. Viral Keanu news is him giving to homeless people. Whoa, Keanu bent over on a homeless person? Keanu Reeves bent over on a crackhead. Or spending time with them on the street, playing with puppies, showing a plush toy around China, or dropping genuine wisdom on us. What do you think happens when we die, Keanu Reeves? Tell me. <laughs> what is Normie content? How the fuck did people, the bots laugh at this? Wisdom on us. What do you think happens when we die? Ah! Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Reeves. I know that- That got a laugh? The ones who love us will miss us. 
With all the pain Keanu has experienced, combined with the massive success he's had in Hollywood, he chose to remain a kind-hearted, humble man rather than a self-righteous narcissist. Most celebrities sell their souls for fame and fortune. Keanu uses his fame and fortune to help others. And although it may seem like he is over-celebrated- Say it is! for the smallest acts of kindness, Keanu Reeves has proved time and time again that he isn't a great guy by Hollywood standards. He is just a great human being. Alright, bro. What a great guy. <laughs> I shot at the Patrick CC. That's it. That's your job?